gonna need some glue today. and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. I um, apologize right now for I have a bit of a like head cold thing going on and so um, I apologize if I sniffle or cough or clear my throat excessively during this video. Um, I do have several beverages with me so hopefully we'll be good um, but my voice has dropped a couple of octaves right now if you can tell but we are here today. Um, I am going to start a new journal here, and this is another design team project for Tracy Fox. And um, I just posted my last video um, that I posted was a flip through of my previous design team project for Tracy, and that was a um, double folio style journal. Um, if you're interested in seeing the flip through of that, um, it's just the journal right before, or it's the video right before this one. And I will try to remember if I can to put a little um, card up there so you can go look at that if you have not seen it, because I am going to work through like recreating that. And I will do a tutorial at some point on how to do the cover, how I made the cover on that. Um, and then I'm just going to start working now on making a bunch of ephemera and things to go inside of it. So I have printed out in front of me um, Tracy's Compendium MK2 kit. Uh, well, I have the ephemera from that. So this is the ephemera that comes with the MK2 kit. And I've got that all cut out and... Um, inked around. So you guys, this is what I've been doing for like the last three days is cutting and inking because I need a new mat for my cutting machine. And because I need a new mat, I couldn't use my scan and cut for anything to do here. So um, yeah, so all of this has been cut by hand. <laughs> so it's been, and I've got it all inked. So it's all been inked and everything. So it's mostly ready to go. It's just like if I put a fold in something. So and then I also have cut out the mix and match, the mega mix and match kits one and two. And I'm going to insert a video right here of me like showing you what I have out on my desk right now because you can only see this part right here, but literally it's covered. So I'm going to insert right here a quick little desk tour, if you will. It's a little tour of my desk. I've got some ribbon my box of buttons and stuff that I keep out for this kind of miscellaneous stuff. We've got small, medium, and large of Tracy's Bumper Butterflies kit. And those are printed onto vellum and cut out. So they're kind of see-through-ish. I don't know, hard to tell on camera, but yes. Small, medium, large, just one page of each. I've got my random assortment of stickers and things. I've got some Tim Holtz stuff. I've got a lovely candle burning because of course that makes everything better. Then we've got all of the pieces. <laughs> These are all just piles. Piles of pieces of Tracy's Mega Mix and Match set. So I've cut them all out. I've kind of grouped them into like similar sizes, I guess you could say. And then here's the whole pile of bases. And then this is what we're working with today. So we're using Tracy's Compendium MK2 kit and we're using her mega mix and match sets one and two. So that's what I've got all over my desk. I also have some random Tim Holtz paper scraps. Over here I've got just my pile of scraps. I've got my bin of 
random pieces of fibers and things that sit on my desk. Over there we've got some of the signatures that are getting ready to go um, into this journal. And so I say, let us, I'm gonna hook you back up into my thing, um, into the filming bracket, and then we will get started creating. All right. So now you've seen what's all over my desk and um, I will have the kits that I am using today linked in the description box below and where you can go get them. This kit is probably one of the most fantastic kits that I think I've ever printed and used. Um, well, I haven't used it yet, but this mega mix and match kit. If you are new to junk journaling and you kind of don't know where to start and you're not sure on theme or you're just kind of wanting to get some you know work done and experience things and try some different things out this is a great kit if you've been around junk journaling or paper crafting for a while this is also a great kit because it adds it's got so much it's got a little bit of everything it's got some words some tickets it's got some floral stuff it's got some detective like Sherlock Holmesy stuff it's got some woodland things some beautiful women portraits stuff it's got some houses like I'm not kidding you guys this gives you tags and tag bases and um like folders and pockets and I this kit is extensive and just super cool it gives you labels and all kinds of bits and bobs so I my goal is to just start making ephemera and I have decided so clearly as you saw in the picture I've got it all cut up and I've got all of the kind of like the base pieces here in this pile and so, you know, for instance, like here's this woodland one and some of the pages are kind of like there's a woodland theme. And so then the pieces you know, of little bits of ephemera and things to decorate with are woodland themed there. Well, clearly, as you saw, I just have them all mixed together because kind of my thought is I am going to... Um, you can certainly, like I said, this is good for beginners because if you go to the Woodland Kit pages, then you can just use it all. It goes all really well together. It all matches together. You just use it together and it's perfect. Um, but I'm just going to kind of make a random, random smattering of stuff. I might pull out pieces that go together, of course, Woodland things or whatever. But this kit all just kind of goes really well together and so does this compendium um, mk2 kit there are two compendium kits this is the newer one called mk2 and <clears throat> so that's going to be the base these are the the base pages for my junk journal i'm also using um the random backgrounds but the pages of the mk2 kit are just gorgeous so since these go so well with the mega mix mega mix oh my gosh um with the Mega Mix ephemera kit, we're just going to start making ephemera. And if we have a ton of ephemera made, maybe I'll, you know, by the time I make up all this, there's no way it's all going to fit in one, <laughs> in one journal. So maybe I'll end up making a couple versions of the cover. Um, I kind of had a different idea in my head for one of them. So anyway, that's enough chatting. It's enough talking. This is the intro to what's probably going to be here a series of videos of me making and I am just going to start picking up some of these base pieces and we're just going to make it up as we go. So that's what we're doing. So since this is on top, let's just start with this. <clears throat> so this piece I cut out and um, I you can cut it apart and have three separate tags, which would work great. Um, or you can leave it together like this and I'm gonna fold it into like a tri-fold tag, I think. And we'll see how that does. I need my bone folder here. Let's see if this will go over. Or should it go under and that one goes over? Yeah, I think so. There was a, um, I didn't really look all that closely at the front. There's usually a little bit of bigger space on one side. 
yeah, so if you look, wow, you can really hardly tell, but there's a little bit of a white space there. And then there's a bigger, more noticeable white space here. So that little bit bigger space, this one should fold in first and then this one would fold in over top. Not that it really matters. I guess we could do it either way. So, all right, now we've got a little tri-folded tag. But I think we should um, make some pockets and things on there. So let's just start pulling pieces. There is let's see. I think these probably clearly, right? The matchy matchy. So they maybe go with. So I think what I my plan of attack is to um, kind of lay it out because here's what I usually do. I usually go in too fast, too hard, start gluing and sewing, and then I'm like, oh wait, I should have put that down first, right? So I'm gonna try and avoid that feeling by, by um, let's see. And there are pieces to go inside of stuff too, so. Yeah, I'm going to try and avoid that by making sure that I lay everything out very well first and then going in on it. Okay, let's see. So if I do that pocket there, that's kind of cute. And we could put a smaller pocket here. So this is where I'm going to use like some of the compendium. They have these big circles, which I thought were really cool. So um, we can put a circle and that can be a side little slip in pocket for like a ticket or something, right? So we can do that. So I will maybe, I'm gonna do a lot of sewing, which I won't do on camera. Um, one of these is a tuck spot. And we can tuck in. There are some tags. One of those would fit in there well. I'm gonna, you know what, I wanna ink these edges here. So I'm gonna reverse fold it and just use a little bit of what ink is on my. So this is what happens, guys. Whenever I start into um, a new journal, or like this giant pile of stuff, it takes me a few minutes to kind of get my bearings and figure out what I want to start doing, right? Never do I ever just like sit down, flip something open, and I'm like, yep, I know exactly what I want to do. That just does not work out that way for me. So that's what we're doing this morning. We're catching our bearings, or this morning, whatever time it is, whenever you're watching this. Okay. I don't want to get too much in there because then I think it'll be too thick. <clears throat> I'm trying to decide. I also have this paper printed out on vellum. I've got a couple pieces of the random um, backgrounds printed out on vellum too. So I'm wondering I might want to let's see, I was thinking I could punch a hole through one of those on the front. Does that one fit inside that one? Yeah, let's see, let's put, let's, I'm gonna use my giant mega two and a half inch punch here and see what we can do about lining it up as best we can. There we go. And that will keep because we certainly can use that again on other things. And then let's see, should we put a piece of this behind there or 
Or do we want just like plain vellum? I kind of like how it matches. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I take my, um, hold on, let me grab my pencil that I usually have in here that I don't have in here right now. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so I'm going to go on the wrong side and I'm going to trace very gently the circle because then I'm going to cut a little bit bigger than that. Put that over here. So I don't know, can you see that where I've traced the circle? Not really. But what I'm gonna do is just cut a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna try and leave myself like a quarter inch or something. Hope you guys are all doing well. This cold is going around our community. Some people get it pretty nasty and some don't. It's not the uh, it's not the big C word. Okay, I'm gonna, now I'm just going to, this is why I drew softly. Softly? Can you draw softly? Yes, you can. This is why I drew lightly. That's the word I was looking for. So I can erase it once I've used it as my guide. Okay, so that will go in this window like so. That's kind of cool. I want to ink that hole. Just because, you know, I think ink ink finishes everything. And since I've got everything else on this whole thing already inked, it makes it easier. This has kind of been my thing lately is if I cut out a whole kit um, of ephemera or something, I try to ink them right away so I can keep working with them as I just as I go. I'm trying to decide this what direction I want this to go in. Maybe match it kind of diagonally like that. <clears throat> but that's going to go. Okay, so I'll sew that on, right? But I'm going to glue it first because there's no way it'll hold down. I just refilled my glue bottle because I was like, this is going to be a lot of gluing. Okay, what did I say? I was gonna go diagonally. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I like that. So the glue is just not, I just put a tiny bit. It's just there to hold it down while I sew around. There we go. I had to fix my dangle too. It had been broken for too long. Okay, so I'll sew around that. Then I want to nip the corner of this when I do a, there we go. When I do a tuck spot, I like to nip the corner and then we'll put this tag in there, right? And maybe some other stuff, who knows, but for right now. And then we'll do this pocket in this circle on there and then we can use that as a tuck spot. So I'm gonna go sew around the edge of this onto here, and then I'm gonna sew this, and I'll probably just sew around each part of this tag too, because I want to, and because I'm gonna sew a lot of stuff in this one. I also might, let me see, where is that? I'm trying to, oh, no, because this is here. So I was going to say, maybe I'd put a little piece on top of the pocket, but no. Let's just start with this. Okay, I'm going to go sew, and I will be right back. Okay, so here we are. I've got it all sewed up. I've got all the lovely strings. I did have a kerfuffle with my sewing machine for some reason. I think it doesn't like the bobber, bobbin that I have in there. Bobber. Bobbin that I have in there right now. Um because it's kind of making a clanky sound, but, and it did that, but I'm not mad at it. It kind of actually looks a little cool. So, um, I am gonna maybe, we'll maybe put something on it. 
to bring to light the fact that it did that. Then I just sewed around the edges of everything. So now we've got it closing up and we've got that lovely little window there, which is kind of cool. You can just see behind it slightly. And let's put, um, you know what? I've got my bucket of buttons, buttons and auxiliary pieces here. That, um, nope, it's, that's too dark, so it needs something, I think, light. Like just a little white button, I think, would be cute. Um, this is what happens when I start digging through this thing. This one, I think I'll use this one because it already has some thread going through it. So I can just pop that on with some glue rather than having to hand sew. You know what? It's not quite enough. Let's get a piece of um, twine or something. I've got this scrap of burlap and I just pull the little pieces out like this when I want to use some. So let's pull a couple of those out. I'm slowly shredding that piece of burlap right there. Let's do this and let's just tie a knot in it. And that ends up kind of making a little squared off. There we go. We'll just glue that whole thing down there. First, I'm going to glue my burlap thing. So I hope you guys are all doing good. Um, it's been a minute since we had an, a chatty video. This is going to need a minute to dry. I need more Fabri-Tac. This would be a Fabri-Tac moment happening right here, but I am out of Fabri-Tac. Um, anyway, hope you guys are all doing good. I clearly have a cold, but that's beside the point. It is homecoming week at school, and we have two different homecomings. We have Foot, I grew up always only just having um, football homecoming in the fall. Like that was always the big homecoming dance was in the fall when it was football homecoming. And um, here we have two different homecomings. We have a football one and a basketball one. And that is partly because um, we have to combine because our schools here are so small. I'm going to maybe put a vellum butterfly on this part of the page too. Um, our schools are so small that we have to combine for sports with another local school. So um, yeah, I like that one. So they're like 20 miles down the road and they're, so we're North Ohm and they're Kellier and together we are the North Ohm Kellier Mustangs so we play all of our sports together. Um, and then for track season, we pick up a third school because track is an even bigger sport. <laughs> you have even more, you know, like a ton of events and stuff. But so in order to have enough kids, I just kind of glued down the middle of that one so that it would have a little bit of dimension and pop up. Um, I'm going to set this aside to dry but I've got this little cluster business going on here and I want that to dry up really good before I fold it up. And then I'll probably put some sort of either like a paper clip or a tie around or something. Um, but I'm going to set this aside so it can dry. <clears throat> and we will move on to there, the envelope, because that was next up on the pile. So first I need to fold it. And I am, I was just about to say I'm going to do this by hand, but I'm not. Because let's be honest, I can never, ever, ever make things straight. By doing them by hand on an envelope, for some reason, I cannot. So I'm going to very gently lay this down over the top of everything and use my lines that I've kind of drawn in here as a guide and line up the Tracy has these lovely pre-inked like edges here so that helps me line up really well okay anyway so the so the Kellier school the other school they um host 
football. So our two schools, well, and a third school for that too. <laughs> we have three schools. We have to pick up another school for football and we're still only nine man football because that's how small our school is. So um, we pick up another local school. So it's us, Kellier and Little Fork to play football. Um, but that is at Kellier because they're the ones that have the big football stadium over there. So then th that's a fall sport. And then the girls volleyball plays at our school. So the kids from Kellier get bussed over to our school every day after school for volleyball. The girls and the boys that want to play football get shipped over to um, Kellier. So it's kind of like just this big cooperative effort, right, between our schools, our communities, which is awesome. I love that. Um, but because of that, the football homecoming is like at Kellier School. So the royalty, the homecoming royalty, and uh, all the homecoming events happen over at Kellier School. And then then North Ohm hosts the basketball. So our boys basketball plays at our school and our girls. So Joy, my daughter, plays at Kellier. So she gets bussed over there every day after school. It's um, a, a bit strange and confusing when you first figure it out, but it works for our community and it allows us to have, you know, sports teams and stuff. So it's awesome. So basketball homecoming is our deal at our school. So usually when I fold the edges of the envelope up, I like to nip this part off. So what I do to do that is I line one of my edges of my scissors up on this side and one of my edges of my scissors up on this side and just kind of eyeball about where to cut the flap like that like so and then I use gotta re-ink that edge because I just cut off Tracy's pre-inked edge but I am not going to glue this shut because I'm probably going to want to sew some stuff on so let's decorate but now I know, you know, which way is up. So let's pick out some pieces. We haven't looked in this pile yet. Let's look in this pile. We maybe have some funness here. We could do that and that could be a, actually a side pocket there. Um, so basketball is our deal. So today is actually all week long has been the homecoming stuff. Oh, that blue is kind of pretty too, though. I bet these blue pieces went on the blue page. <laughs> Maybe these birds are pretty. We could use one of these as like a side load pocket and then one of the pieces could go into the side load pocket and a smaller piece. Let's see, maybe a label. That's kind of too blue. Oh, I apologize if it gets loud too, because it's uh, garbage day. So the garbage truck's rolling by out there. Oh, I've got a little blue bingo card. We could have those two things go into a pocket. That's kind of cute, I like that. Then we need something up here. We could do that. And there are also some little words and stuff. So, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sew that on. And when I do, I'll just sew around. And then I'll do on the flap, I'll do this. Oh, and then maybe that piece of, a piece of that lace that I had. And that needs something behind it too. Let's see. Or maybe a word. No, it needs like a just some white scraps of this. What is this called, guys? Muslin. There we go. It's like I could hear one of you saying muslin, Nikki. Okay, I'm gonna cut that off. And then I like to just kind of like 
fray the edge of it a little. I don't know, it just kind of looks cool. So let's put this down. And then that. Kind of imagine, whoops, what that'll look like. Fold it over like this. I like it. Because this might go, you know, over the edge of a page or something. So that'll be a cute little embellishment there. And then this will go on here. But I feel, I'm going to move this piece over here. I feel like it needs something else before I do that. It needs something in the background. So I think what I'll do is I've got some, I've got a book that I've been working through here. This is an old Abraham Lincoln book <laughs> that I used the cover of a while ago and it has just this great patina. So um, I have been working on that and I love how it's got tons and tons of these. It's got tons of these little sections. So then you get really cool little headlines and I also like how they just say really funny things like a pretty tolerable respectable sort of a clergyman there we go so that's gonna go on here first it's just got great headlines and stuff it's a great book for putting in the background even though it's like in the background and you cover up a lot of it it's still fun to have um like cool things you know it, it's fun to have it say cool things so we'll do that we'll put that there we'll save this bit also because it's got this great edge patina it look the I save these little bits to like glue along the edges of things because they look really cool too okay so if we put that there if we put that up kind of up along the top edge and then we'll put this and slide those in. But of course, I want to, oh my gosh, work with me fingers. It is a, because it's so old. I think this book is from like the 1890s or something. The papers are a little bit fragile, so you gotta be gentle. They tear nicely, but you gotta be careful when you're inking them because they also tear nicely <laughs> while you're inking. Anyway, so homecoming. Normally homecoming would not have been a big deal in our household. It's just, you know, like the girls play, uh, Joy plays sports, so it'd be that. And um, we, you know, we like to go to the events and stuff, but it's never been either of my girls' goals to like run for homecoming court, or, you know, or anything. For those of you who are not from the U.S., if you or if you just have no idea what I'm talking about, there's the tradition that at homecoming time, um, you have a king and queen of homecoming. You know what? I'm going to actually scoot this over just a little bit, and I don't mind if it goes over the fold. I think that will be kind of cool. And then you can see more of the res tolerable, respectable sort of a clergyman text there. Okay, then I am, I'm not going to glue that in place and I'm not going to glue that down because that'll all just get sewn on. Um, so it's not been either, you know, like when you kind of imagine what your kid's high school is going to be like, um, never have I thought my girls will be running for homecoming courts, just not their deal. So it's traditional that you would have like a king and queen of homecoming. And um, you usually you run like you run like it's <laughs> you run like you're running a race or running a, a political campaign almost. We had to make posters and stuff. Oh, my gosh, because Lizzie's in a very small class of just nine kids and um, they need three boys to run. So all three of the boys in her class have to run because they had no option. And then <laughs> and then. Um, it needs something up here. I think I'll probably put like a button and some fabric or something, but after I've sewn it on. Well, let me see if I want to sew a little piece of, I've got some really skinny. Oh, I've got also, where did that go? It's way over. Hold on. Oy. I have a few scraps left over from nature books I was making. 
that were just like sitting over there. So maybe I can sew this on as I go. Cause you know, birds in the tree. That'd be kind of cute right there, right? Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna go sew around that and then sew that on and I will be right back. And then I'll finish telling you my homecoming story. Boom, all right, so we've got that sewn on. I just sewed in a square. So I sewed in a square, that's not a square, it's a rectangle. And then I sewed the little leaves on to create the little pocket for the birdies. So we can put our little bits in there. And then maybe I do want a little, maybe a button again. Um, oh, the little flower button is kind of cute. Although, you know, I want to make sure that I don't put too much, like the buttons and stuff tend to get bulky and dimensional. And then I was going to see, do I want to put a little butterfly on here somewhere? I think, I think I'm good with the back part of it. I'm good with that, right? And I like how that folds over the edge there. I'm glad I did that. And I think maybe I want to just sew a butterfly on right here. And I'm just going to go with this one because it's the first one I grabbed. I'm going to go sew down the middle of that. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Now I've got a little butterfly sewn on there too. That's cute. So let's go ahead and seal up this envelope. I am going to cut these strings off the inside here because we do not need the excess stringage. Too much stringage is not good. Gets a little confusing. Okay. Anyway, so uh, the three boys had to run because they need three king candidates and there's only three kids in her entire senior class. So funny. I We continue to laugh at that because her senior class in the Twin Cities would have been about 100 kids, which still is very small, con you know, compared to some of the larger districts where the classes are like 750 kids. So for her to go from that sort of environment down to nine kids in her senior class is just hilarious. It's something that provides us endless amounts of amusement still. <laughs> like, I don't think we'll get over it. It's funny. Um... Okay, I maybe want to put like a little word. So there's words and little sayings and little things. And I see one here that says no blue Monday. If my fingers would work with me. No blue Monday. Let's maybe just put that. Yep, I like that right there. Um, this kit is so great because it's just got all these little bits and pieces and you can keep just gluing and sewing them on <laughs> like all over the place and you end up with a pretty, pretty easy way to create cool, fun ephemera. This kit might be one of my favorites. <clears throat> um, okay, well, it is one of my favorites. So I love that. This is super cute. So there's our little flap on our envelope and there is the cover of the envelope. That'll look super cute over the edge of a page, over the top of a page, around the edge of a page and we can put a paper clip. Actually that worked out really well because there's nothing here to catch with the paper clip and nothing here. So a paper clip over the top would work really well there. I'm gonna put this in the done pile. Let's see, we'll start a done pile up here. Okay. Next, we have another blue piece. This probably came on that same blue thing. This is a this is two tags. Of course, you could cut them apart and have two tags. You can fold them together and make a tag pocket flip out thing. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna make this into a tag pocket. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. Whoops, see, this is why I should always <laughs> This is why I should always use my scoreboard for these sorts of things. Because I just think, oh yeah, I did that great. I just eyeballed it for the sake of time. No, should not trust that. Okay, so then the three boys had to run and then they were looking at girls. Well, also because it's such a small class and because it's a small school, they have like princess royalty that comes from the 
lower grades, and then the seniors are the ones that can run for the upper royalty. Is that right? Upper royalty? The senior royalty? Who knows what the heck I'm trying to say. Anyway, I think for this one, what I'm going to do is make this a pocket right here. So we'll find a piece of ephemera that slides in here from um, a stack that I have over there. And then we'll probably put some pockets or something, tuck spots on the front and back of this. And then we'll make this a pocket and maybe we'll put some string on the top or something. Um, but so before I sew it all the way shut, let's decide what we're gonna put on the front and back of it and what's gonna fit on the inside. So I've got these pieces from Compendium that if that slid in, would that be? Well, I could put a um, tab on it though. So maybe if that became our card that slides in and out, but I can put a tab on it, that works for me. Yeah, and then let's decide what we're gonna put on front and back. We do have these too. Some of these are even bigger. We do have this lovely lady that looks like she, oh, that's too big. See, it's too big because I'm going to come sewing down to here, so she's got to be able to slide in and out, and that wouldn't work. So in order to keep things fair, I guess you would say, oh, she might be even better. Yeah, I think, I think she'll be even better to slide in and out of the side pocket here. I'll put a tab on that so it doesn't get lost in there. But yeah, we'll go with her. And then let's decorate the front and back. Um, so to keep it fair, they <clears throat> you can only run for no, that covers up too much. You can only run for um, like king and queen once or princess. So you can either run, if you ran for princess, then you um, can't run for queen, I think. I think that's how it works. We could still use this just as a large um, pocket on front, which would work just fine, as long as I have something that will slide in and out of there that is too big. That would have been just perfect, but it's just a slightly too wide. That's such a pretty piece, by the way. It's like a little terrarium. Yeah, it's not quite wide enough, though. That's going to be our thing. And let's see, Just I'm just gazing around my selection of stuff here. I think we will make that a pocket. Could I make it a side? No, I really like the way that has on the top, so it's not. We could go that way because if this has got a tab on it, I could put the tab up higher and then we end up with layered stuff. I kind of like that. And then I could put another piece in here too. I do this because I imagine where the pocket would be. So I'm kind of just seeing how far it goes in there. I do that and then we find one more piece that could go in there. Let's go to this other little pile of like more floral types of things maybe. This is kind of cool. I'm telling you, you guys, this, yeah, okay, I like that. And then this will go on the inside, and then we need something for the back. So let's, we've got that decided. Now let's decide what we're going to do on the back. Let's look at um, some of these medium-sized butterfly as maybe like a belly band type of thing. They're all going to be just slightly too wide because they might, well, I could just cut them off too, I suppose. Wouldn't that be kind of fun though? And then I can put, I've got this ticket that came in the kit that could slide in behind it. I kind of like the idea of just sewing, when I'm sewing around the edge of this, catching the butterfly as a belly band there. And then I'll just clip off the edges, which is fine. Yeah. And do we go with this colorful one? I think so, because look, we've got colorful stuff over here. Yeah, okay, that'll go in there. 
So these are things I need to sew on. <laughs> I need to find a tab for that. I'm gonna put this pile back over here. And um, I think I'm gonna just tack this down because otherwise I won't catch it while I'm sewing. So the other girls had run already for homecoming princess or queen or whatever. And there was one girl who just absolutely didn't want anything to do with it, which is fine. And uh, so then they looked at Lizzie and said, okay, you're gonna run for queen too. And she was like, well, okay then. So my Lizzie, my 18 year old, who's a senior, ran for homecoming queen. And um, I just couldn't get over how funny I thought that was because she's just always, you know, it's never been a thing for her. It's never been something she aspired to or said like, oh, I can't wait till I can run for homecoming queen. Matter of fact, if we were still in the cities, if we were still in Brooklyn Center, there's no way she would have run for homecoming queen. It's just, again, not her thing. Um, I'm going to nip these off now as best I can without, I should be doing this from the other side so I don't cut my fold open. Um, but here she is running for it. So then we had to like make posters and make a whole campaign. So that was fun too. Again, something I never thought I would be doing with my daughter, but there we go, we did it. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna sew this on first, this way, around the edge. And then I am going to sew around this whole edge. And I wonder if I should, no, it'll be fine. I was thinking, I wonder if I wanna make a thumb notch or something, but I don't think so because the slide in and out stuff should be just fine. Well, this is my indecisiveness, guys. I could do a little bit of a nip in the side of this and maybe I'll do that. Just a little bit of a nip off the edge there and then try and catch that same general space. So I'm gonna mat line it up with where I nipped it off there and then just slide forward and see if I can try and make that happen. Wow, what do you know? I actually kind of lined it up okay. All right, so I'm gonna ink that where I cut. So yeah, Lizzie ran for homecoming queen. We had to make her a whole like posters and stuff, which was, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty fun. Let me go uh, sew this and then I'll tell you about our posters. Actually, while I'm sewing this, let me just insert a little clip here so you can see, cause you know, I'm proud of my kids and stuff, but I'll put a clip here. I'll put a couple, I'll put a couple of her homecoming queen posters because I made them in graphics. You know, I, I can do graphic design, so it was super fun. Um, and my daughter's name is Elizabeth Lizzie. She goes by Lizzie. So that explains a couple of these. But we also decided that she should be highly endorsed. So <laughs> that'll explain the endorsements on her posters. It was pretty funny. So I've got that sewn shut, so now it is a pocket on the side. So we've got space for these little guys to go in on the front pocket and this to go in back here. And then she needs a tab. So let's pull out my little supply of whale tail punches that have been kindly sent to me by lovely people 
such as yourselves. I like that one, so we'll go with it. And it needs folded though and inked. All right, so did you love those posters? Um, my favorite is the Queen Elizabeth one because I am an Anglophile in a lot of ways and love the British aristocracy and monarchy for some reason. That stuff just fascinates me. So that one was a no-brainer. Queen Elizabeth III, love it. Anyway, um, it was super fun. It was super fun. And she ran and she did not win, although apparently it was very, very close between she and the one who actually did win. Um, but, you know, that's new girl problems too, right? Like everybody's known these other kids their whole lives. So, so it was fun though. And the best part was she, Lizzie, and the um, her classmate, the one that she walked out with, his name is Dan, they uh, both work as teacher's aides in the second grade classroom, which is also by happenstance where one of my nieces, one of her cousins, is in second grade. So they were, they're of course big fans of Lizzie and Dan because they are the coolest. They're high schoolers that come and work in their classroom. So that makes them cool, right? Perfect. I love how those all line up. And this ticket does not want to stay in back here. So maybe we need something a little bigger either to go with it or maybe one of these things. Oh, maybe one of these things in this pile here. It needs something bigger that's going to help it like stay put. Yeah, that, that one stays better. We'll save the ticket for something else. This this lovely lady gets to hang out. Oh, I don't know. I might need two things in there. That's better. Look, this is the official test of how it works. <laughs> so, okay, this can be either stuck in to um, a pocket or clipped in probably to the journal. Um, I feel like this needs something else up here. And luckily I have this little pile of fussy cut things that also comes with the, we've got some leaves, maybe one of the leaves. Yep, I like that. So we're just making speed decisions here, guys, speed decisions. We'll put the leaf with maybe a little tiny bit of cheesecloth behind it. Um, so anyway, the second grade class usually, ow! That was just me not paying attention. I just totally cut myself, you guys. Sorry if I yelled into the camera. It's not bleeding though. It's like a paper cut. It's merely a superficial wound. <clears throat> um, okay. So the second graders don't usually get to come to homecoming coronation, but they talked their teacher into going because they all, and they also don't get to vote. Only the, only the high schoolers get to vote for who's going to be king and queen. But they talked their teacher into going because they love Dan and Lizzie. They're their cool high school buddies. So they went and it was super cute because when they announced them, they cheered. You could hear all of a sudden hear all these littles cheering. It was so cute. <laughs> you could hear them in the background going, woo, Lizzie, Lizzie. It's pretty cute. There, that, that just made all the difference. Okay, here's another finished piece. Um, I was thinking of maybe putting... A ribbon on top you know we haven't done any yet so let's just keep judging let's keep judging I need a hole reinforcer I thought I had some right I do hold on I'm leaning I've got these colored with metallic markers because this was a great idea from um, the nature journal let me just this is a little excessive here the cheesecloth there we go from Alexandra and she had some gold um, hole reinforcers. And I was like, that is so cool. Where'd you get those? And she's like, I made them. I just colored them with a, with a um, marker. So then I did that. So thank you for the inspiration. 
Alexandra. And, and now I'm going to put one right there. And I don't have to worry about punching through this and pa impacting this slide in and out card because it can only come to the top here. So it's not going to be a big deal. First, I'm going to punch through. I've done this before too, where I glue it on the front and then I glue it on the back and I, I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm guessing at where it's going to go. I never line them up right. How could I? So here we go. We punch. Oof. And then we put it on the back. <laughs> you live, you learn, you grow smarter. So she did not win, but it didn't even matter. She wasn't even bummed. It was just super cute. And um, homecoming fun continues all week long. They've had like dress up days and stuff. And so the girls have been dressing up as all the various things. And that's been fun. And I've got some sorry silk right here in my extras pile, which will go pretty well with this. So let's do this without cutting myself this time. It's still not bleeding. <laughs> what I did. Um, so today is there. And then yesterday they had a pa uh, lip sync battle. Each of the high school classes had to perform a lip sync. That was pretty funny. Lizzie's class did Dancing Queen. And Dan, the guy, her friend that walked out with her, um, was the Dancing Queen. That was pretty funny. Now, because they won first place, they get to perform it at the Pep Fest today. So that should be good. The little kids will get to see that one. And Joy's class did Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. So, and they get to perform too because they won second place. Okay, I like that. That's going in the finished pile. So let's readdress this since this is probably all dried up. Yep. Um, I did see a label that said Woodland and as much as I'm trying to like, you know, stay away from being too matchy-matchy, sometimes you just got to be a little matchy-matchy. This says Woodland. Yeah, I kind of like it down there. So I'm going to glue that on. And I have no problem throwing all of these pieces together into, even though this says Woodland and stuff, I think because this is such a mix and match thing, um, I have no problem. Is this going to leave a weird mark? It might, and then we'll just glue something on the front too. Uh, throwing it all into one journal because I think it kind of, you just get kind of a mix and match feel to the whole thing. Yeah, so that leaves kind of a weird little mark in the front here, but we will just find a little bit of something to glue over the front of that. Maybe another little butterfly, since we did a butterfly on the back. Mm -mm. Yes, but with a piece of, where's another little scrap of this? This scrap has, sometimes when there's like lots of extra strings, I just kind of push them over and, you know, they kind of static cling to the muslin and I don't mind that because it's fun to just sew over that all the little extra stringy bits here I just kind of you know cling them down onto there is that a good descriptor I'm gonna go sew over that and then we'll put we'll glue him down alrighty so that's sewn now we're just gonna glue that down in this corner and I think this piece will be done. We'll just review it. And then I'm probably like way too far. I don't know how long this video is so far because I've got all the sewing and stuff that I will edit out and in and whatever. But I think maybe we'll call this a, a day. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just film. I'm gonna continue working through some of this, you know, ephemera stuff. And I think I'll just film it and then speed it up. So it can be, you know, you can still see what I'm doing. Yeah, I like that. There's a little bit of something. Something is some desk somewhere. That's okay. It just kind of grunges up the edges. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, like I said, is I will probably just post another video after this of me speeding up some of this production of the ephemera so you can kind of see me working my way through this kit and then we will come back at some point in the near future here 
and um, work on putting together the journal as well. And maybe I will do another chatty video of me putting this together, um, putting these ephemera pieces together because this is such a fun kit and I really, these were fun to make with it and I cannot wait to do some more. Oh, I brought out some Tim Holtz frames. I really wanna do one of these on something. So yeah, maybe I'll make one more chatty video of me doing this and then maybe I'll just speed up some of it too, who knows? There's a whole lot of tag based, envelope based things to get through here. So um, yeah, right? They ca I can't just do all of that. It would be like we'd be here for a week and a half. You'd have to live and sleep and eat your meals here with me. So anyway, um, Homecoming Queen, Lizzie is not. However, Homecoming Week it is, and it's super fun. And I hope you enjoyed my little uh, insight into that <laughs> and a uh, picture of their poster. Sorry, I got to take a sip. And I hope you enjoyed hanging out while I made these. Like I said, I'll make one uh, another video of this because this is fun. Thank you, Tracy, so much for this fantastic kit. I cannot wait to keep putting stuff together here. And uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night, whatever time it is on whatever side of this fantastic globe of ours that you live on. And until I see you next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless you guys. Take care. Bye.